Welcome to Forgotten Architectural History. In this first episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the backstory of two historic bank buildings in Montreal. At the intersection of Notre Dame Street West and Seigneur Street, there's a red sandstone building. The words Bank of Montreal in raised relief above the ground floor and the iron numbers 1894 near the roof offer some hints about its origins. This was a Bank of Montreal branch built from 1894 to 1895, and the architect was Andrew Thomas Taylor. The architectural style is variously described as Flemish Renaissance Revival, Queen Anne, or a hybrid of the two. The building across the street at the southwest corner also stands out. The words Bank Chambers above one of the doors offers a partial clue to its origins. A little research reveals that this was also a bank branch, in this case for the Merchants Bank of Halifax. This was also built from 1894 to 1895. Edward Maxwell was the architect and the style here is categorized as Italian Renaissance. A heritage report from the City of Montreal describes these as a gateway to the Lachine Canal sector and calls out the exceptional quality of their architecture. I was curious how these two bank branches ended up facing each other, built at the same time in different styles but alike in dignity. I couldn't find any answers from secondary sources, but I dug into historic newspaper archives and found that there's an interesting story as to how these banks came to this corner. We'll start by looking at Ormista Laporte, who personified the reasons financial institutions set up business in this area and who had a direct, although accidental, role in why the banks landed at this particular intersection. Laporte was born in 1850 in Lachine, now part of the city of Montreal, but then a village located several miles from the city. Earlier in the 19th century, a canal connecting Lachine to the port of Montreal had been constructed, and the canal took its name from the village. Lachine Canal, built with financing from the Bank of Montreal, facilitated the transport of goods and materials, part of a worldwide trend that included the Erie Canal in New York State and Regent's Canal in London. Laporte and his family moved to Montreal in 1866, settling near Lachine Canal. A major concentration of industry and commerce had sprung up there, including the neighborhood where these bank buildings now stand. It is now known as Little Burgundy, but back then it was considered part of the city's west end. As a teenager, Laporte worked in a nail factory, shown in this engraving, located close to the canal. But in 1870, the year he turned 20, Laporte started a grocery business. Over the next two decades, his company grew into a wholesale business, and in 1888 he brought in two business partners. The firm, renamed Laporte Martin Company, occupied rented premises on Notre Dame Street West, but wanted to expand further and construct its own building. In April 1890, Laporte and his partners acquired a site for their new headquarters at the southwest corner of Notre Dame Street West and Seigneur Street. They purchased it from the West End Methodist Church. The church had been at the site for over 20 years, but needed a larger building and also cited the increasingly industrial character of its current location as a reason for moving. While Laporte and his partners were waiting for the church to leave the site and then build their new structure, they remained at their existing rented location, which was a block and a half away. During this period, the Merchants Bank of Halifax opened a new branch in the same building in May 1890. Merchants Bank of Halifax at the time was small, but aggressively expanding. As its name suggests, it was based in Halifax, Nova Scotia, but three years earlier it had opened an office in Montreal's financial district. Now, it was expanding its presence by opening a neighborhood branch. Although local branch banking became common a few years later, at this time it was a new concept. Bank of Montreal, which was the country's oldest and largest bank, and had its headquarters downtown, only opened its first Montreal branch in 1889, the first time any bank in Canada had two locations in one city. The relationship between Laporte, Martin and & Company and the Merchants Bank of Halifax must have been a good one, because after the grocers moved to their new headquarters in November 1891, the bank became one of the tenants in their new building. It was five stories with a basement, housing the company's operations and serving as its warehouse. Le Prix Courant a business publication, described it as a magnificent building, which is one of the more beautiful monuments of Rue Notre Dame West. Unfortunately, two years later, disaster struck. Early on the morning of April 27, 1894, a fire started inside the Laporte, Martin & Company building. 
Although it had stone walls and was built to be fireproof, the Montreal Fire Commission later concluded that faulty electric wiring was to blame, and a newspaper surmised that the large stock of alcohol and other flammable materials acted as an accelerant. The building was destroyed. Fortunately, no one was killed. The port had insurance, but not enough to cover all the losses from the fire. The bank, on the other hand, was fully insured. This wasn't the end of the road for Laporte, but it did mean he and his company were short of cash and couldn't rebuild immediately. They moved elsewhere, while Merchants Bank of Halifax took control of the site and announced plans for a new building to rise from the ashes of the destroyed building. That's how a small, out-of-town bank came to construct a branch at the corner of Notre Dame West and Seigneur. Bank of Montreal noticed what was going on in its own backyard and decided it too needed its own branch in this area and purchased the property across the street on the southeast corner of the intersection. We don't know for sure if Bank of Montreal was dead set on being directly across the street, but it was certainly serendipitous that it was able to find a cellar. In this case, it wasn't a church, but a woman named Madame Narcisse Laurier. As was common custom, Narcisse was her husband's first name. Hers was Philomène. There's not much information available regarding Narcisse and Philomène Laurier, but years later, their death notices listed their occupations as bourgeois, presumably as good bourgeoisie, for the right price they were willing to sell. Both banks started construction in 1894 and opened the following year. Merchants Bank of Halifax changed its name in 1907 to the Royal Bank of Canada. It continued to grow and by the 1920s eclipsed Bank of Montreal to become Canada's largest bank. Both companies remain major financial institutions today, but eventually they both closed these branches, which are now occupied by stores and offices. As for Laporte, despite the fire and the loss of his property, his business rebounded at its new location. On a personal level, he became active in local politics, serving on the city council from 1897 to 1904, and then became mayor of Montreal, an office he held for two years. After that, he remained active in business and civic affairs, including serving as president of the Provincial Bank of Canada for 27 years. That's his portrait and signature on the left side of a $5 note issued by the bank. In 1918, he was knighted by King George V. He was also an avid weekend fisherman, as this 1929 newspaper article attests. Sir Ormista Laporte died in 1934, age 83. He was remembered for many accomplishments, but his unwitting role in turning the intersection of Notre Dame West and Seigneur into a hotspot of beautiful bank architecture was forgotten. Thanks for watching. For more information, please see the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.